Okay, everybody, it's Chris, and I'm back to react. Now, please, my room is a fucking mess, and again, I dropped that for it, I apologize. But today, we're going to get into my first toxic relationship by Sugar. Uh, this seems to be a very big topic that's currently going around, and honestly, I even talked about it to some people, and talked about it in a podcast, and all that good sh stuff. Um, so, we're gonna get into this, um, I know that at the beginning she's sponsoring something, and I really don't want to skip it, but, like, the thing is, like, there we go, yeah, there we go, that's, that's, that's perfect. I don't want to skip the sponsorship, but you know, I just kind of want to get in the video. Anyways, um, let's just get right into it and see what was her first toxic relationship and how it went. And so, yada yada yada, to sum things up, he totally just left me hanging. Like, what am I supposed to do at that point? I hate it when people don't take my problems seriously. Dude, yeah, for sure. You honestly deserve better. Ha! <laughs> Ain't that the truth? It's nice to know that at least there's someone out there that cares. Yeah, I totally feel you. Like, earlier today, I was in class, and this guy just totally whips her. out his... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> I'm sorry, you still there? He hello? Sorry, I actually have to go right now. Mm -mm. Talk later, bestie. Mm -mm. Thanks for the rant sesh. You- oh, hold on. You get back there and sit with Sugar and listen to her dang problems, you freaking- Mmm. Okay, sorry. Uh, I, uh... Huh? Toxic relationships can be hard to spot. Sometimes when yeah. you make a friend, you don't see the red flags right off the bat. It's just nice to have someone to spend your time with. I'm all for giving people the benefit of the doubt. However, there are some relationships you need to take initiative and leave. Yeah. I've been in abusive relationships before, but today I'll focus on my first toxic friend. When I was in fourth grade, I made two friends. They were the kindest people out of the whole class. The first girl was more like me, she was shy, loved to draw, and loved to joke around. The other one was more extroverted, participated in school councils, and photography. Me and Splenda never had interest in those things, but somehow we were all part of the same group. I that couldn't happens. see the signs back then, but clash my together. second friend was toxic. As long as Splenda was with me, our group was able to have a great time. When me and second friend were together, it was completely different. We yeah. had to do whatever she wanted. I had to like whatever she wanted to talk about. I basically had to agree with her word for word. I was used to being the second wheel. I'm an empath. It's what we do. She would try to get me to watch inappropriate yeah, videos, empaths. and as she described them, I had no idea what she was even saying because I was super innocent. Hey man. I just want to play on the jungle gym. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure what you're even showing me. In sixth grade, we were doing a charity for those less fortunate to get a better education. Yeah. There were multiple debates about what to name the charity. They were going back and forth between pennies for peace and dollars for dreams. I thought both of the names needed work and came up with the name dollars for scholars. Second Ooh, friend was in the good. class council, so I told her to give them the name, but make sure to credit me. She agreed to the terms, but when it came to giving the name, she took the credit. And that was the last time I told anyone my ideas. Okay, I pause there. Um, first of all, it seems there's always this thing where, like, there's always a certain person that's in charge. Or a person that, like, is very outgoing and extrovert. I know it's not all extroverts, but a lot of percentage are, like, very bossy and stuff when it comes to, like, a pack. And it's always, like, one person who's, like, in charge. And then the other person is just following them. And it's... Th this appears in a lot of bullying videos, and it is pretty significant. And it is pretty scary to think that's, like, how it works. But at least somehow you know the signs more clear. Also, for taking credit, you should never take credit for something that isn't yours. You should always credit them. And it sucks that, like... She gave them their idea, and they took it away, and then she just ended up never telling her ideas to anybody. Or she maybe she does now, but at the past, she just stopped. And that's hard, because that's like shutting down ideas and opinions. 
I decided to just move on because it's just a name and we're still friends. But it still bothers you. It's not you. a big deal. We stayed friends throughout middle school. Splenda had to take major time off during that time because she needed hip surgeries that were life-threatening. If she didn't get them, she would have walking problems for the rest of her life. One day, second friend comes to me and starts saying things like, Isn't Splenda stupid? What? What? Yeah, she's a terrible friend. She hasn't been here in a while. She's getting surgery! She's legit in a freaking hospital! Yeah, but when she comes back, we don't have to be friends with her. Uh, uh, I'm sorry? I'm the only friend you need. Let's just ditch her. Yeah, okay. Splenda never came back to school. Her recovery would take a really long time. I didn't own a phone back then, and the internet wasn't that prevalent, so I had no way of keeping in oh, touch with sad. her. And eventually, we just kind of lost ties with each other. Second friend started to become more and more toxic each yeah. day. Anything I liked, she would make fun of. Any belittling comment she made, she would. Any political Honestly, I hope she I finds her second, valid. like Basically, the second friend. Basically, my existence like, was below like, that's been happening her a lot lately. Point. I became her dumping ground for all of her emotional issues. However, when it came Oof. to what I was feeling, yeah, so I think I'm sad because she would just ignore honestly, it. just get over it. Your problems aren't as important as mine. Why don't you just move on? Why don't I just shove my shoe up your... I got really good at giving robotic responses when she ranted about her issues. I used to ride my bike to school and since second friend's house was on the way home, I would ride my bike next to her until she got home. Over time, she decided to walk home with cooler friends she would talk to instead of me. Don't That's get me good, wrong, though, I tried to get leaving. into the conversation, but they just ignored me. I would get really bored and start trying to pedal away. However, where do you think you're going? We won't be friends anymore unless you stay with me. Oh my I god. I felt trapped. I could leave the relationship, but then I'd be all alone. Yeah, Over that's Over time, scary though, part. the thought of that seemed to be more appealing. If you live in California, you can count on a yearly school trip to Disneyland. We the don't have that. Trip was we have up, magic and I If I went with her, she would have us do whatever she wanted and it would be a miserable time. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I was able to meet some cool people in my PE class two weeks before the trip. The day of the trip, I sat next to second friend on the bus. She already had a group of people she was gonna hang out with. So did she even need me? I'm just her dumping ground after all. Once we got off the mm. bus, where do you think you're going? <sighs> With them. Sad to say, I don't remember any of their faces. But for the first time ever, I stood up for myself. Yeah. I had a great Disneyland experience with them. For the first time, I felt like I was part of a friend group. Okay, key and points. Um, okay, so for the thing about leaving, about being alone, that is actually in any type of toxic relationship, just not just in friendship, but in relationships or anything like that, you always fear that you're going to be alone and you're not going to have anybody or find anybody um, to be friends with, the threatening and stuff like that. Like, you do want to leave, it's just really hard to do so. And then the whole thing where, like, she planned everything and blah, blah, blah. And finally, when she stood up to her, like, honestly, she might not remember a lot of it or any of, like, the other two people or anything. But just having that relief of finally actually trying to have fun is amazing. And I think a lot of people who are toxic keep on people, like, they don't even like. They have it because they're like, oh, like, I have to have the most people that I could dump my stuff on because I have to. So, like, it's more like a count thing rather than a friendship thing. So, like, or sorry, friendship thing. So, like, I, I get what was happening here, and it sucks that Sugar had to be a part of it. But, um, I mean, that's my key points for right now. Let's keep going. So, we moved on to different high schools. Whoever you guys were, thank you. Why don't mm -hmm. I tell this story? This applies to kids and adults alike. No matter what stage of life you're in at this moment, listen. Even if you make a friend, you don't have to stay with them. You can leave any time. Friendship needs to go both ways. Yeah, this it is does. It's a give and take situation for both parties. You don't need to stay friends if you feel like the other person keeps taking and giving nothing in return. Sometimes spending time alone is better than spending time with someone that doesn't give you the time of day. 
I need to give a shout out to this week's sponsor, which is... Okay. Um, she has a point, and there's other bullying videos that I wanted to react to, wanted to react to, um, and I wanted to talk about there as well, but yeah, that is one thing I forgot, it doesn't matter what age you are, it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter what you're doing in your life, there's always gonna be somebody who tries to treat you wrong. Or there's always going to be somebody that bullies you or tries to take control of your life. And honestly, if you don't have a friend that listens to you, like you listen to them, or you do not have a friend that is there for you or helps you out when you have to do the same thing, friendship is a two-way street. It's not just the one. You always have to do be equal to each other. You can't always control one another, or, like, at all. You can't do that. There's two separate beings, and they came to form a friendship because you trust each other and because you actually felt safe with this person. Having fake security with the person in friendship and then using them or bullying them is not something you should be doing. So, that was my reaction to that, and my key points to that. Lately, I feel like I've been reacting a little bit more different than how I usually am, besides the swearing. I feel like I have to make key points, because I don't know, first of all, the mic, and second of all, um, I just feel like it's easier rather than to talk over them. But I apologize for all the super pausing, and I thank you guys so much for watching me react to that video, and I hope that if you guys are in a toxic relationship, you do manage to leave it, or if you ever were, that I hoped that it, I know it was hard, but I hope that now it's a little bit easier. So thank you guys so much for watching me to react to that. You guys are all my beautiful, unique weirdos, and I will see all you guys next time. So.